check check one two um hello everyone this is level with me this is my show where i play through games and talk about what i think the level design is doing and sorry for the late start today uh kind of got uh distracted with all the fun source engine related news happening today with like uh source code leaks and whatnot um so i you know i fell down twitter holes and stuff so anyway let's return to what really matters which is playing through games and nitpicking the lighting Let's remember, yeah, let's just maintain some perspective and just remember what's really important in life. Uh, we are about halfway, maybe a little bit less than halfway through Black Mesa. Uh, we are currently in a chapter called On a Rail. I played most of the On a Rail chapter last week. Uh, so today we'll probably be finishing On a Rail and then moving on to whatever chapter happens after on a rail i don't remember what chapter that is oh apprehension Ooh, i actually like apprehension A i think apprehension is one of the uh underrated chapters of half-life so um maybe we'll try to start that uh today after we finish on a rail anyway let's get into it how's everyone doing today though people are doing okay in new york city right now it's pretty sunny although very deceivingly so. It's quite cold. Uh, it's, it's what you might call San Francisco summer, where it looks pretty nice and sunny, but then you get out and it's freezing. You better bring a jacket. Uh, okay, so let's see. We are... Oh, gosh. What was happening? Okay, I think what happened before was we came out of here... Uh, we... I should get that battery. Yeah. Um, we awesome. fought through this, like, train area. Oh. So much health. It's very generous. Um, we fought through this, like, train area here. And now, um... And we also did some kind of, like, rocket launch puzzle set piece thing. Uh, so now you can see that rocket raised up there is... The result of our efforts from last week where we got the rocket ready to launch and now hopefully in a few minutes we'll enter we'll have to fight our way into the rocket mission control center and launch that rocket um i think it is worth noting though that i think a lot of players oh that plant i mean that's a nitpick. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to try to nitpick less and focus on what matters. Um, I think it's worth noting that a lot of players... Ooh, can sneak up on this guy. Um, it's worth noting that I think a lot of players wouldn't really be sure what exactly is going on. Like, why are we launching the rocket? Uh, what is going on in this... What's the story of this game? Um... You know, this is, again, back to 1998, where you're going from Quake and Doom, where the story is literally, like, one paragraph you get at the beginning of the game, and then and then that's kind of it. Now we're entering this phase where um, we're experimenting with how to deliver the story, where you, the de story is being delivered by exposition from people uh, talking to you. And if you're not paying attention to the NPCs talking to you and explaining what's happening, you're just going to miss pretty much what is happening or what the protagonist's goals are or something. Um, play a game now and there's always going to be, you know, like a mini map and like an objectives indicator about what you're doing and why. And people repeat what's happening like three or four times over your radio in a cutscene and then in another cutscene to make sure you understood it. Um, very different idea of how to do level design and how to communicate those level design beats to players. Um, but what's nice about Half-Life is that it's uh, pretty flexible, you know? Like, if you don't really care about the story, that's fine. You just keep looking for enemies, shooting the enemies, and it will guide you to where you're supposed to go. Uh, so what should I do? Okay, I have to sneak up on this guy. I like that there's this, like, second... Um, 
right? There's two ways into this encounter, I guess. We could break that lock and then charge forward into battle. Uh, or we can take this way and sneak around it and then kill that grunt before they can shoot us with that gun turret emplacement thing. Now, it's worth thinking about how the game kind of signposts all these things. Ah, am I, am I stuck? Um... Right, how do you even know you have two options? Well, the supposedly secret option is actually super obvious. They have caution stripes there. They have literally four light, they have like a, a ring of light fixtures to try kind of draw your attention to it. They also illuminate the underside of this pipe and stuff. Um, so right, like, it's actually not really that sneaky in, in secret, but you know, to a player, it does feel secret and sneaky, like we're being clever here. Um, and I think that's what this sells really well. You know, everything is pretty quiet. Um, you know, if you've played games, you know, like Thief or any immersive sim with like a stealth component, you know, um, sneaking is not an easy feeling to sell to the player. Oh, what? What? How do you know I was there? Oh my god, these grunts are too smart for me. They're really good at finding cover and flanking me. Ah! Oh, that was a bad thing. Oh no, and they blew up my little gun. Oh no. I'm gonna run away over here now. I'm gonna follow these this breadcrumb trail of batteries. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Don't re reload before the battle, kids. Don't reload during the battle. Ouch. I can't tell what's happening. It's really dark. I can't even see too well. And I'm doing this like ring around the rosy around like uh, this like rocket platform, which is kind of a fun idea. I'm not sure if this is the how the flow of the original fight went. Oh my god, I can't see him. Uh, there we go. Good thing there's dynamic light when they're shooting at me, otherwise I would not be able to see them. I should use more of these grenades. I, mean, I should just charge in and shoot. Them. Oh, ouch, ouch. Okay, that didn't work. Also, my aim's really bad. Did I save just as I was being killed? Uh-oh. Uh... It's a lot of grunts. It's like nine, ten grunts. There we go. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a pretty big fight. Um, that was kind of surprising. I wasn't expecting to fight like 11 dudes or something. Um, it seemed like the fight flowed the way it was supposed to. Um, 
Like, I was supposed to go here, they were supposed to throw a grenade here, destroy the gun emplacement. Although the gun emplacement wasn't even that good, because I had to... Because uh, these fixed guns aren't so good at try hitting these grunts from really long range, because the spread is really big. So you can't even stay here for very long anyway, it's kind of a fake power fantasy. Um, and then I had to run over here. And then get all these batteries. That's kind of like the level designer shrugging a little bit and being like, Okay, yeah, we know you're just gonna lose a lot of health and die here. So run over here, collect all this, uh, all this energy, all the, all this armor over here. Uh, and then that helped me a lot. That armor helped. Oh, there was more battery breadcrumbs that I didn't follow. Well, they do break the flow here, right? I didn't go over there because I had to fight these enemies over here. And then there's not... I guess I could have jumped on this rock and then ducked behind here. Maybe that would have been a smarter thing to do. But yeah, there's a lot of batteries. Oh, and there's a, oh, there's a lot of supplies here, actually. <laughs> I guess I didn't really notice it that well. Huh. Um, yeah, that's also a good point. You know, when you are standing at that gun emplacement, you are super vulnerable. And yeah, one reason I did have to leave that gun emplacement is that this light post was here. And then the, there was this grunt guy right here is very savvy. He was using this light post as cover. So yeah, it is funny how yeah stationary guns are either OP or useless. Um, as uh, S. Marmar says, Smarmar in the chat says. Can we open this door now? Oh, now I'm trapped. Oh well. It would be cool if there was a way to uh, open this gate. Is there like a button? Oh, ew. Uh, there's like a yellow light there. There's a light signal. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what any of this means. Oh wait, oh, I could have just ducked down into here too. Oh, but wait, no, I wouldn't have because I will have just fallen to my death. You shouldn't do that. Oh, uh, it would have been cool if that was part of the flow though. Like I wish, uh, I think it would have been cooler if there were uh, supplies down here. Then you could run down here, like, run down here, get some supplies. It's actually a little bit of cover, but, like, vulnerable, soft cover that doesn't really help you that much. But, you know, enter putting some verticality in the fight where I'm, like, fighting them from this trench would have been kind of fun. And while I'm, like, peeking my head over and then ducking back down. I think that might have felt better than... Coming around here and then like trying to breadcrumb me into flanking the grunts because it doesn't even really feel like I'm flanking them. Um, and then the rocket here isn't like wide enough. It's not thick enough. You know. You know. You know. I'm a fan of thicker rockets, right? I just want a nice big thick rocket right in my line of fire. Uh, so I can duck behind it. Um, that that might have made this fight feel better too. But then, but then the rocket wouldn't feel realistic or whatever. So yeah, I don't know. Um, anyway, interesting fight, interesting arena. I think with a lot of potential. Uh, maybe I just kind of screwed it up with my poor performance. I don't know. Let's go in here. What was this? Oh, this is, was a, this is another gun emplacement. You know, whenever video games do this, I think if you've played shooters before, you'll be like, oh, okay. This is a useless gun emplacement, but actually it means we're just gonna have to backtrack and fight our way out of here, and then you're gonna use this gun emplacement against, like, grunts that spawn out of that door or something back at you. So it's a little bit of a foreshadowing kind of thing, too. Am I supposed to go this way? No, I'm supposed to go in that hatch, I think. I didn't sign off for this shit. Ooh. Hell yeah. What, civilians? What is this damn operation anyway? 
Ooh, I like this. That you can like eavesdrop on them a little bit and um and you're behind the computer mainframes? That's kind of fun. Let's uh just throw a grenade or two over there. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> that did not that didn't work. Oh shit, there was glass. I didn't even know there was glass there. <laughs> That's why it didn't work. I thought I was being really sneaky and clever. Oh god. Ah! Oh my god. Oh, I'm choking. Ah! Oh my god. Good thing me and that NPC are both bad at aiming. We're made for each other. Um... Oh, wait, and then we're already in the control room? Oh. That's very different. The original flow was very... D yeah, you usually... In the original, I think you had to... Oh, I can't go through here. I can't fit through this door. Uh, in the original, I believe... You had to fight through all these hallways a little bit, and then, yeah, there was like a little bit of like a laser trip mine sequence or something. Um, I mean, maybe it's okay that they changed it. Um, this, this hologram looks really nice. I like that. I think I would have made the inner additive thing, like, pulse a little bit. I mean, they have a little bit of that distortion effect, which is nice. But I think I would have made it, yeah, blink or pulse a little bit more to sell the hologram idea. Um, but, yeah, this is lovingly remade. I like the hologram. Uh, ooh, and this is like a nice little like dais here. Oh, and then there's um, there's a little map of the United States. There's a uh, there's New Mexico. I guess that's where Black Mesa is. I didn't actually know where in New Mexico Black Mesa was. Now we know. Are there any locations marked on this map? Oh, right. Okay, so I guess the story is that um, we're launching that rocket. That rocket is going to put another satellite up in the air. And when we have another satellite up in the air, we'll be able to do some kind of... We'll make the portal to Zen near the end of the game or something. I think that's what's happening. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, let's see. I like these... Uh, oh, God. Oh my god, bodies in the way. Uh, I like these little mission control stands here. This seems kind of nice in the in the detail with all these uh, cranes here, or all these or arms or whatever you'd call them, all these fancy arms here. Feels nice. Uh, and I like how the desk is kind of curvy too. Yeah, it's a nice mission control bug. I think I would have put a light here to show, to help me see what is even going on. No, maybe you wouldn't put a light here here because then I wouldn't feel stealthy. But the problem is that without the light, I didn't even know that there was a glass panel here. And then the glass and my grenade bounced off the window and just hurt myself. So let's see. Mm, what's going on here? Oh, Stormseeker's in the chat. Hello, Stormseeker is a Black Mesa developer. Everyone say hello. Um, let's see. I think one weird thing is the way the... it's These are like fake reflections painted into the table surface. I'm not really sure what's going on. They feel kind of weird to me. Because they don't actually behave like... Uh, Reflections. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on. It feels a little bit strange. But it would be hard to do nice reflections there just because, um, you know, the cube map stuff is still pretty coarse in Source 1. Um, let's see. Oh, should I press this big blinking button now? Hmm.
Um, in the chat, I'm being told that I promised to nitpick less, but that this is a nitpick. No, this is... Okay, here's how I would define nitpick. A nitpick is when um, there's like a level designer or someone building something, and then they're not really paying attention to it, and it's not really like an intentional, purposeful thing. They just didn't... They overlooked it. It was a nit that they overlooked. Um, this is not a nitpick because this is purposely baked into the texture. This was a detail that the environment that the artist purposely put in there, and I'm saying this detail that they intentionally put in there doesn't work for me. So this is not nitpick. This is feedback. This is just regular feedback. Do you, do you want to see me actually nitpick? I'll show you what a nitpick is. Um, this is too many papers. And why are the papers all bunched up like this? Also, it doesn't explain where all these papers came from. I would expect to see like a manila folder right here, right? right? Why isn't there a manila folder here? It doesn't explain why there are so many papers here. Okay, see, that's that's much more of a nitpick. Sorry to be so sassy. <laughs> yeah, why is why don't I have ragdoll effects on these papers, huh? I thought this was supposed to be an HD remake. Come on. Um Let's see, uh, people in the chat are now apologizing to me because I'm correct, and I'm always correct. Thank you. I'm glad you all saw the light. Um, oh, uh, Storm Seeker in the chat says, we paid AMD, so no PhysX. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> Give us money for the NVIDIA license and we'll do it. All right, it's not PhysX. It's a uh, Havoc, right? Havoc? Hav Havoc? It's incorrectly spelled Havoc. Um... Oh wait, ooh, I like these mission control screens. Oh, I wish I had more of a reason to look back at them though. It's almost kind of sad. It's also a little bit... The flow of the room is weird because... I, I mean, maybe this is how mission control rooms are actually built, I guess? Like, do people... People sit here and then you face that screen, right? But if you're down here, you actually can't get a good view of that screen. You're just staring, you're just squinting at that hologram, I guess, if you're sitting down here. But wouldn't mission control things, wouldn't all the stations be facing the other way towards the window? I don't know. Um, oh, sorry, I should clarify that the joke about paying uh, NVIDIA and AMD was a joke. It was a mod. It was a source licensee joke. Speaking of source licensee jokes, did you hear the source <laughs> license code was leaked? Um, okay, let's go ahead and just press this button. Sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, Fire Pingu Two subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you, Fire Pingu Two. That's like, I think I see like get like fifty cents from that. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, no leak talk. I'm sorry, zero leak talk. This is a leak-free zone. Um, there, no, a leak didn't happen. Um, but if it did happen, hypothetically, if a did, leak did happen, which I'm not talking about, um, theoretically, um, uh, I would say if you're making playing a single-player game, it's probably safe because... Uh, you would be in land mode, hopefully. You would be booting up in land mode, and you wouldn't be, like, exposed internet-wise. Uh, so you're probably safe, I would say, playing single-player stuff. Um, or maybe even Black Mesa. Is Black Mesa multiplayer safe? I don't, I don't know about that. Um, theoretically, if I were talking about leaks, yeah, I wouldn't be so sure. Uh, but there are reports that most Source Engine 1 games would theoretically be affected by a theoretical leak of Source as an Engine licensee code. Um, oh, I like this computer prop. I like... Um, this feels unique just for this kind of room um, because they're reusing the hologram from over there. 
Uh, ooh, I like actually. I also like how the colors are even the same too. I think I remember the there were like orange boxy satellites in the original too. Okay, let's press this button and enjoy witnessing a different kind of disaster happen. I do like this big fancy you like anim they like animated the shutter to like curve window very fancy feeling ooh ooh and then look at the dynamic light source ooh oh don't stare directly at it though I don't think you're supposed to Really nice sprocket effect. I do wonder though how tempted the Black Mason team was to just steal the episode 2 rocket launch effect and just reuse a lot of it. I mean that's probably what I would have wanted to do, but you know. Oh and then the rocket's just gone. Oh. I was hoping we could see like more of it off in the distance. Oh well. That's nice. Now, again, if you're playing Half-Life 1 and you missed a lot of the exposition and stuff, um, you wouldn't even know why you launched that rocket or what that rocket even did, that you were launching a satellite that you would be seeing in the future, or in the future chapters, right? Um, so, but if we're, we're playing this in the year 2020, you'd get a radio message, right? And be like, good job, Gordon. You launched the rocket now we can activate the satellite please come back to the lambda complex do you hear me your next destination is the lambda complex and they would repeat the name the lambda complex several times to remind you that that's your next destination um so yeah um oh in the chat uh storm seeker says uh oh we actually did have the episode two <laughs> launch particle effect but it killed the frame rate Um, so for decent frame rate, we had to remove, oh, and yeah, you might have had more smoke and stuff too, because it is a poorly optimized particle effect. Yeah, I imagine. That makes sense. Yeah, I can't wait for Black Mesa 2 in Source Engine 2, right? Are we all excited for that? Oh, I like this flow actually. So if assuming you were like me and you missed this whole little supply cache here, they drop you back right out here so that you can get these supplies. Or if you were speed running and you just ran past all those soldiers or something, then you can come back out here and then you're relatively protected from them. Where do I go now? Oh, I guess I go in this open door now. Um, let's see. Before we leave, should we no clip around a little bit and admire some of the construction here? Hopefully the engine won't crash. Um, let's see. Overall, the flow... Yeah, I like the layout overall. I like the, the, the road. It's actually really nice and smooth. You do get a feeling of the boxiness here though, right? Ob this feels very obviously like a 90 degree corner that was gray boxed and art passed into a cliff. So you still get a lot of that, yeah, Counter-Strike feeling where the, the gray box is still very much there. Or the orange map, I'm sorry. The block out. Uh, ooh, I like these additional um, background buildings up here. I like that the lights are on. I really like uh, night scenes. It's a little bit of like a night city scene a little bit. I think I probably would have had some windows on this facade though. Probably, yeah, I think I would have put some windows like right there. Just because it feels a little bit repetitive when you uh, reuse the same 
exact orientation and reuse the same window placement over and over. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I do wish that, um, oh, now that now it's all been portaled off, so we can't even see it. Uh, I do wish that the outside of this was foreshadowed a little bit more because it's is raised up so much. So when you're down here, like I wasn't even looking up there. Ideally, we're able to see that like our objective, which is that like big mission control room with that beautiful big curved glass window. Um, yeah, I wish it was, um, I don't know, I guess geometry wise, I think maybe I would have sunk this lower so that it would be more at the player's line of sight. Because otherwise you're lighting this dead end here and then you're drawing my attention to here and I'm not even looking up there. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's what you could do too. Maybe turn off these lights and instead use some nice up lights, like mounted up lights, like right there, pointing there, and a up light pointing there. Uh, and then maybe that would help us see this a little bit more. Just because it's like a unique shape that breaks a lot of the structure of the concrete bunker. And it's a little bit of a shame that we don't get a sense of more of that, you know, flavor there. Uh, let's see, people in the chat, sorry, I've been missing out a lot of it. Um, let's see, people want a demake of Black Mesa in Black Mesa Sora. <laughs> um, in the original Half-Life, that would be fun. Um, and then, uh, oh yeah, there's an H2, HL2 Classic mod you can play. Um, let's see, lots of tweaks to come though. Mesas have just been art passed for the new version of upcoming patch for Black Mesa. Good job. Um, oh, and there's a Quake D make of Half-Life called Quarter Dead 0 0.5 by Scampy, uh, who's a Quake mapper. If you're into Quake, definitely check it out. Thanks for the recommendation, Quasi Otter. Uh, okay. Uh, in the chat, uh, this question is, uh, in the original, the, isn't the window design different? Yeah, I think in the original, it's much more of an actual, like, bunker thing with, like, a very small slot you can stare at. This is more like a Hollywood vision of what a motion control thing would be like. Or I think at, like, Cape Canaveral or something, they might have big mission control things like this, but it would be, like, miles away from the launch pad, right? Not right next to the launch pad where it would just melt the glass. Like, everything here should be destroyed and burned up, right? Realistically, but it's a video game, so we'll just carry on. I'm told I shouldn't be nitpicking, so. Oh, so many head crabs. Where are they going? What is this place? Okay, that's a cave-in. I guess I'll go back here. Oh. See, there's some uh, supplies down here, over here. Oh, wait, wait, maybe zero supplies. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Okay, let's go over here. Actually, I have full health. I don't really need any supplies. Let's see, what's down there? I guess I have to head down there. Oh, hello. There's a zombie down there, it looks like. And then there's a train here. I guess I'm supposed to take this train. Is this train broken? I can't really tell. Yeah, it's, it seems broken. So I guess I have to uh, take this well-lit ladder down here and solve some kind of puzzle. Hmm. 
Electrified little pool of water, you know, as you do. Am I supposed to go this way? No. That's shut. Oh, I'm supposed to take this other train. Ooh, I like this train. I think I would have modeled out these gauges, though. Right? Because... And it, and it oh the black oh it's it's like a diesel train so that's why it's like all blackened from like smudge and soot and stuff. Okay, so actually this area is just very straightforward and I'm dilly dallying for no reason. I felt like you know this area just seems like a seems like a big hub area or something you know like it seems like there's some kind of puzzle to solve here it's a little bit non-linear it's multi-level i thought i was gonna have a reason to dwell here longer but it seems like no it's just like a little transit hub it's like the penn station of half-life we're just <laughs> we just want to get out as soon as possible oh it's like a digital display down here nice Oh, is this gonna is this train gonna crash soon? Is that what's gonna happen? Oh now the controls been disabled. Ah <laughs> Oh uh oh ah And another grunts shooting at me from up, up here. Yep. So that seems pretty faithful from the original Half-Life. I remember it did begin with this like train that suddenly goes off the rails and then you're launched. Into this chapter. So apprehension is, oh my God, rude. Who is that? Who, sh who just shot at me? I don't have any long-range weapons, though, so it's hard for me to snipe at them. Okay, maybe I'll just try to play normally. Um, I like apprehension because I like the rusty metal silo textures in Half-Life. So that's one reason why I like apprehension. Uh, other reason why I like apprehension is that I actually like water levels, and apprehension is a water level. Like, I'm a fan of the Water Temple in Zelda 64. Uh, okay, I guess I climb up this ladder? Oh, okay, I guess I'm not climbing up that ladder. That's mean. That's such a mean little level designer trick there. Like, oh, you should climb up this ladder. Actually, you can. Okay. Now, I can understand some people not liking apprehension because it makes them apprehensive. Or maybe uh, swimming isn't that fun. Or maybe they have like drowning phobias, uh, which is maybe an issue you could address at any water level in any game. Um, oh, the lighting is really hitting that box in a weird way. It's like super bright. Um, also, some people don't like the time pressure of drowning. You're trying to figure out where to go while you're also trying to manage your air supply. And then, then everything's dark, so you can't even see what's happening. So, I can see why people don't like apprehension, but I'm just saying I like it anyway. Oh, can we swim through there? No. Now, if I recall correctly, the puzzle here is we need to, like, it's like the original Half-Life 2 floating crate puzzle, where we have to somehow get a bunch of floating, yeah, get a bunch of these floating barrels here and put them underneath to build a bridge. I believe that's what we're doing right now. But of course, the first time you play this, you're like, where am I going? What is going on? Is this like Sonic, where I can breathe the bubbles here? But I 
it seems like the those bubbles are there to draw your attention to this floating barrel which you need Oh no, a cave in. Oh, you cowards. Okay, that okay, here's a little nitpick right there. In the original, this cave in right here is one of my favorite improvised effects in Half-Life where it's like uh you see this pile of dust rise out uh cuz all this dust caved in from the ceiling, so you see this pile of dust rise out and that's literally just a cone like a spike rising out of the floor but when you do that you give this like hourglass kind of illusion that all the dirt and mud is like piling up there but it seems like there um they didn't want to animate a pile up thing which is you know i guess understandable not the best use of your time um but you know still i i miss it gosh darn it uh, can I use this crate to, uh, make things float? Does that help? I don't know if that helps. I think we need the other barrel. Is the other barrel over here? Is that what I'm looking for? No, no barrel over here. Do I have- maybe I can run across that bridge now. Maybe I have enough floaty things there. Oh wait, no. The barrel's right here. I was missing it the whole time. <laughs> oh my god, so mean. In the chat, Stormseeker, Black Mesa developer, just said, Right, Robert wants us to create this effect for the future, so we will definitely not make this effect. So mean. Oh my god. And, you're saying, and, you, and you think I'm mean? Oh, very binary kind of thing. Okay. So once you have enough there, it just boost, boosts up there in a very non-ambiguous manner. So now we have enough of a bridge to do a running jump. And now we can fight some grunts? Or fight some zombie grunts. Ooh. Original Half-Life did not have zombie grunts because, of course, they don't have that kind of texture and model budget Is there a guy up here I can't see everything's too dark for me any supplies over here no ouch you shot at me oh okay maybe I'm just gonna keep going Oh no! Oh, that's so mean! Aww. I knew that was gonna happen. Ooh, nice water effect. I think that's from episode 2. I know that because I think I've reused that water effect before too. Oh god, I have to swim! I have to swim before I run out of oxygen! Okay. Here we go. Now we're safe. Let's see. Uh, one other nice thing about this chapter is that it's kind of full of the Half-Life gameplay that I like, where it's a lot of exploration, it's a lot of like environmental puzzling, where you're just thinking like, where am I supposed to go? Do I go this way or that way? To get that way, I have to go here and then there, right? That's the kind of puzzling that I like in games personally. Uh, and Apprehension is a chapter that's pretty much about this, although... I can imagine it is indeed frustrating if you're just kind of not really sure where to go and you're lost all the time. That's probably really annoying. Like me right now, I'm actually not sure where I'm supposed to go. Is this a window? I can't make out what that is. Is this a window? Why can't I go through that window? Oh well, I guess I'll just keep going and ignore it. That's the way I just came, so I need to go a different way. That's caved in. Do I go in here? No, that's a dead end. 
I go in here? No, that's nothing. Hmm, where am I supposed to go? That door's shut. Yeah, also this is, yeah, very classic Half-Life 1 style architecture, you know, like concrete bunkers with like a rock ceiling. Um, you know, you you play a lot of Half-Life Deathmatch maps that kind of copy this tunnel, concrete, cliff style. Because it has all your major level design food groups, right? Concrete, cliffs. I, those are the two major level design food groups. Am I supposed to go through that window? I take back all the nice things I said about gameplay. Gameplay is bad. Oh wait, no. This looks like unbreakable glass, I think. Maybe I'm not supposed to go that way. Maybe this was just like a breathing room and I'm supposed to go backtrack? Seem right. There's no other way for me to go. Let's see. Uh, remember, don't panic. Don't panic about drowning. Oh wait, oh, I'm supposed to go in this hole with the bubbles. Ah, uh, okay. Maybe sign, yeah, maybe signpost that a lot if more if people keep getting that. Cause I, the takeaway I got from this is when you cave in this side, I'm like, okay, I should ignore this part. I don't need to look at that part of the map then. So that was my takeaway when I saw the cave in. So, huh, I mean, more than a few bubbles, that's what I would say. Maybe put a light here? Maybe put like a little light fixture here to catch the player's eye if they're looking down at just the right angle. Because otherwise, if you don't have your flashlight on, right? How do you even know that there's a hole in the floor there? It's pretty solid. But, you know, maybe it's okay if players panic and are lost and confused for a while. You know, maybe we coddle players too much. Um, do I go down here now? Oh, and then there's like a sewage current? Am I supposed to follow this like sewage current? What's happening? Oh, now I'm in this room. Ah. The flow of this is kind of different from the original. These might seem like a bunch of... Ooh, grenades. Oh, and crossbow bolts. I remember that from the original. There's crossbow bolts even though you don't even have a crossbow yet. Oh wait, that doesn't do anything. Uh, I remember this is on the way to the shark room, I believe. Um, I've actually written about this area for uh, PC Gamer because this is one of my favorite set pieces in Half-Life. If I can find my way to the shark room... Uh, where do I go? I'm lost. Someone help me. Oh, now I'm backtracking. Oops. That was the critical path. That is nowhere. This is the room I just came through. Wait, where am I supposed to go then? Uh... Oh wait, I'm supposed to go up here? <laughs> yeah, maybe getting lost is okay. Um... I think I would open up this a little bit more. If you wanted to give the player a little bit more of a hint, 
for some reason I kept overlooking this. And I think one reason why I kept overlooking this is that um, I think if it had more of like an open alcove thing leading into that stairwell, it would feel more important and central to it. Oh god, ah! Oh, I didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> the valve hurt me. Does valve... Valves hurt people. What does this valve do? Oh no, valves help people. Valve is good. Where do I go now? Gosh, it's so empty now. Now it feels like a Counter-Strike map. Right? It has it has some like DE prodigy energy. Um, but yeah, I like that. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Should I just shoot it now? Oh, you can't shoot it now. That's kind of funny. In the original, there's a, it's a little bit more streamlined where there's a scientist on the platform and then the, and then the Ichiosaur just pops out and then dives back down. Here, the Ichiosaur jumped onto the platform and then did a little dance and then jumped back down. That's kind of funny. Um, so this is the shark cage set piece. Uh, this is one of my favorite set pieces. Um, yeah, and I believe Quasi Otter linked to it in the chat. Thank you. Um, I like this set piece just because, you know, it's like so precarious and it's, you, you know, you can just guess what's going to happen with this. Um, like now you have to fight a shark. What, how many games tell you that you have to get lowered into a cage and fight a shark, right? Or I'm sorry, hug a shark. Kiss the shark? I only hug gay sharks. Um, oh, and then this is the way back up to get lost. Uh, the layout here looks pretty much the same. I like the addition of these corner little viewing platforms. This is nice. This gives like a little bit more context to the catwalks here. Let's see, can I get past this one without getting snatched? Yeah, okay, there. Ooh, and the water's so dark. I like how the water's dark, because it's like you can't even see the icky sword down there. Because theoretically, if you could see through the water, if it was well lit here, you could just take pot shots at the giant dinosaur shark that's underwater, and then the encounter would lose a lot of its urgency. So it's pretty important that either the, for this encounter that the water is either really opaque, but let's say you're Black Mesa Source and you want to do really fancy water. If you want to do really fancy, shiny see-through water, the other thing you could do is at least make it dark. And then that way, Players still can't do pot shots. Can I make it past this buddy? Let's see. I'm super on edge about barnacles just because, yeah, in Half Life Alex, I've been trying to get through that more and more, and barnacles in Half Life Alex are just <laughs> really scary and brutal and very sneaky. They're always in the dark, little dark areas. Oh, I like this. This is like a little bit of storytelling where this is the... You would expect to see this like random auxiliary access in a utility closet like this. So that's that feels pretty consistent to me. I like it. Did you see it? They claim it was hauled from the Challenger Deep. Look at all these cockroaches. I'm positive that beast hasn't swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. Ew, look at all these cockroaches. There is a Ew. tranquilizer gun in the shark cage. 
but I'm not sure it would work on this particular species. Oh, what is he saying? He's telling us how to finish the game. You're more than welcome to try your hand. It may be in your best interest to reload. Uh-oh. So, you know, if you're a regular viewer of this stream, you might know that I have a rule where every time an NPC reminds me to reload, be I have careful. to... The creature has developed quite an appetite for raw meat since its arrival. Oops. You know, it's just so patronizing. They're telling me to do my, how to do like my job. I know how to reload a gun, even though I hadn't, even though I did forget to reload, but still. Oh, people are telling me I should drag him in. Can you pick up bodies? I don't think you can. Sorry. Oh, oh man, that would have been cool. Like, that would have been cool if you could like drag like corpses and push corpses into the water to like distract the ichthyosaur, and then that lets you like get by. That would be like a cool use of the physics and stuff. And also, it would justify the incredibly sadistic, awful thing I did. Oh, this has been revised a lot, though. Hmm, okay, I don't know if I'm a fan of this new, ceil of this new ceiling portion. Okay, so... In the original, if you look at that PC Gamer article, one thing I really like about it is that um, you have a you have like a very narrow like gangway like you have to walk the plank and then when you walk the plank you have to f jump down into the shark cage and then the shark cage gets lowered right um, and I think that's it's really important to me I think that it's like a very narrow plank I think it like helps emphasize that what you're doing is this really foolish, dangerous kind of suicidal thing, right? Um, but here, when you change it to, um, when you change it to like a giant like gantry crane thing, that frankly, I think doesn't quite suit the old industrial rustiness of this area. Um, like all this blue and yellow color scheme doesn't quite fit the rest of the vibe here. I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. I think it almost feels too secure, you know? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's okay if you disagree, if you like the blue lights here, if you like the little spot of yellow here. Um, but I'm just saying... I'm correct, probably. That's all. Uh, okay, let's descend into the shark cage. Well, I like that it's uh, all like physics-y and wobbly. That's nice too. Um, in the in the original, um, the the train is also like, uh, or not the train. The the cage is wobbling. But you'll recall original Half-Life 1 did not have physics, right? So to make it subtly wobble, I believe it was like a door or like a train or something. It was like some weird hack to make it so that it could wobble and then so that it would also fall down too. That was the only way to animate it. Uh-oh. And then that's the game giving you a warning that it can't support your weight. Very rude. And now we're stuck in this cage. And now this dinosaur is gonna eat us. Where's the dinosaur? Oh, there's the dinosaur. Ah! <laughs> uh, now, in practice, fighting the dinosaur is actually pretty easy, unfortunately. To me, this is where some of the original, and it was kind of easy in the original Half-Life balance as well. Where it's just, I think, one or two crossbow bolts, um, you know, kills it. And it's a little bit of a shame because all you have to do is backpedal and backtrack. And when you, and when you backpedal, 
um, it, you know, it can't really catch you, and then that gives you more than enough time to kill it, usually. Um, of course, if you weren't an expert macho action game player like me, you know, you wouldn't have kept as calm as I just did, right? So, you know, if, if this was your first time playing, you wouldn't really know what the Icky Sword is capable of or what its AI does. So that moment hopefully probably will have been scary for you and you would have like missed with the crossbow over and over and over and it will have been kind of funny. Now you'll notice I had to turn that valve to open the door. Um, you know, that's... That's important because the fact that it takes time for you to open that door is what forces you to deal with the Ichiosaur instead of just making a run for it. Because if you try to turn that valve while the shark's after you, you know, you'll just die. You'll get eaten. Up. Let's see. I think this chapter is probably one of the least art past and most faithful chapters, I think. And you could either say that's good or bad. Again, I'm a revisionist where I would have argued that I would have changed this chapter a lot more. Um, but here you can see it's almost like a lot of the original architecture has been kept, right? Everything is still kind of boxy. Everything still kind of has the same proportions. Um, you know, no one tried to like do like a guitar solo with all these pipes and machines along these walls, uh, which is what they might have done in, like, say, Blast Pit or another chapter, right? So this, along with um, Unforeseen Consequences, I think, yeah, are among one of the, some of the most straightforward chapters in Black Mesa Source. Ooh, can I snipe people now? Oh, no, that's the wrong way. Should reload so I can pick up more bolts. This catwalk's really awkward. Like, there's not actually enough, like... Like, imagine you were walking here. It's, like, so cramped and small and weird. Like, its purpose is just to cast these shadows here, right? Oh gosh, I can't go here because then the barnacle will uh, eat me. So I think most players would probably jump down onto there. But if I recall correctly, jumping down to here is a trap. Uh, and what I like about this trap is that you saw that I switched to the shotgun, right? Because the shotgun is probably the weapon you would want for that encounter just now. But most players, they will have had the crossbow. And when you're having the crossbow, it's a little bit scary to do close quarters combat with the crossbow. You know, you're under a lot of pressure. You might miss, especially with the Vortigons that who like sideswept who like sidestep and strafe you a lot. The grunts also sidestep and strafe you a lot too. Um, so it's kind of funny. It's like kind of expecting you to have the wrong weapon already. Um, yeah, and then uh, as Stormseeker points out in the chat, they hint that you should maybe switch the shotgun because you, we did see that shotgun ammo sitting on top of that box right there. Um, so it's a little bit, yeah, it's like a level designer saying, I told you so. Oh, one thing, I like these uh, railing props. You know, they're like industrial feeling. Are they modeled? They look modeled. Ooh. And I believe this room is pretty faithfully recreated, right? I remember a lot of this room is about having to avoid the water because 
you'll notice this water is very opaque, right? We can't see through it because I think there's two dinosaurs down there, right? Or can we see through it? No, it looks very reflective and opaque. But to just give you a sense of what's down here... Oh, hello, friend. And then the crossbow reload time is a really... Oh, I just died. <laughs> Too lackadaisical, sorry. So I think what most players would be doing is because it's two ichthyosaurs who are very strong. I thought I shot that other one like four times. Um, you would be pretty careful about running along here. But then the game's trying to trick you into falling into the water a lot. In the original, weren't these also slippery? Maybe I'm misremembering it. And then you can't jump through there because that's like a live wire that'll like electrocute you if you try to jump through that way. So you have to jump through this way, but then it's really weird. Why is there like a big hole in here? It's reddened, which means, yeah, it like melted the metal or something. Someone welded their way through. Oh, and then there's a G-Man. Oh, and then there's another bull squid. I think that's the first G-Man sighting I've actually caught this whole time. Oops. And then here's a little generator room. I think this is like a piston platforming puzzle we'll have to do soon. press this button and you're like yay I'm gonna start the generator but when you do that now you have to jump on this very quake like platforming puzzle what's this way oh, just some more supplies I guess Oh, and then this is back where we came. Oh gosh, oh gosh, okay. Okay, let's see. I can jump across. Ah! Oh no! And then I panicked when it spawned something up there. What did it spawn? I don't know what it spawned. Just have to redo that. So in practice, this is a very forgiving platforming puzzle because even if you fall, you know. Oh, it's just a head crab. I was scared of a tiny little head crab. Oh my god. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna no clip. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sure that was a really fun platforming puzzle. Ah! This was a very sneaky head crab. It walked away from where it spawns. And then I think the way this encounter was supposed to work out was I was supposed to see that health charger go over here. When I do that, the head crab over here jumps and attacks me and it spawns the hound eye behind me as well. So this was supposed to be like bait to trick me, I think. Oh. 
Oh. This guy's Freeman. problem. Wait, did you, you trap me in here? The science Wait, I wanted to explore the progress with the Black Mesa security ah, jerk. Fortunately, so has the military. That suit of yours is full of tracking devices. Still, it's better than going naked in this place. It's cold in there, naked, so you'll you have say? to hurry. It could sap your suit power in a matter of moments. If you're bent on reaching the Lambda complex, then you'll want to keep to the older industrial areas where the security system is full of holes. It's worked for me. So um, far. people are telling me to reload. I did reload my gun. Do you really want this guy to die? Maybe I shouldn't have reloaded my gun. And now this is like a fun set piece that I think a lot of people probably remember where you have to run through this freezer section. And you're constantly losing health. So it's like you have to hurry, but then you're under combat pressure as well. The secret to this section is to just keep running because none of these monsters can even catch you anyway. To just uh, approach it kind of like a speed runner. And then when you do that, that section's actually like kind of disappointing because then it's it only takes like five seconds to run through. But I imagine the first time you play through it, you actually don't know how long the whole freezer section's gonna be. Um, you don't know where the exit is. So there's a lot more uh, unanswered questions that might uh, have a lot of more pressure on you. Uh, Osteophyte says that's me at Costco. Just run through the freezer, right? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I live in New York City. I haven't been to a Costco in like years. Oh. Should, uh... Switch into missiles. Oh. They've like created cover for themselves. Very sneaky. Doesn't it spawn more Vortigons as you walk through here? Yeah, like that. This hallway is very faithful. Uh, anything I'm forgetting here? No, I guess I just go up here. Freeman, right? I got a message for you. Make sure you don't. Ooh! Oh my God! Oh, you actually see this. You actually see the assassin this time. Interesting. Oh gosh. Okay, so now we have to fight some ninjas. Okay. Um. Let's see. How much time do I have? I have to teach level design class pretty soon. Uh. Do I have enough time? Can I get this ninja assassin battle done with in like 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, maybe. I'll try. Let's see. So I remember when I first played this, in my first playthrough of Half-Life, um, I tried shooting them with crossbows, but then the, nin the assassins are just so fast, it's really hard to fight them with the crossbow. Uh, so then I have to use, so then I thought maybe I'd use the shotgun, but then it's hard, really hard to catch them. They run really, really fast. So then the strategy I settled on was to go out there, bait them, and then set up some trip mines and let them kill themselves. Um, there's a lot of different strategies I imagine players pursue, uh, but I would imagine a lot of the ones that are um, 
aim challenged like me with not the best aim or reflexes, you should rely on satchel charges or trip mines. Uh, t or if you have some uh, SMG grenades, oh, it looks like I have three, that some kind of explosive thing real quick uh, to just catch them off guard. Uh, but yeah, this is also an iconic chapter in Half-Life that looks pretty faithfully recreated, it looks like. Hey, let's get into this fight. Let's see how I do. Isn't this a trap, if I recall correctly? It's like, um, it's a broken health charger, and then you come into this dead-end room with an explosive barrel. I wonder where the assassins are, though. Oh, there they are. Uh -oh. Oh my god, ah! Oh my god, she dodged it. Seek medical attention. Warning. And I have like zero Trigger, health. Sir. I'm probably just gonna die. So I'm just gonna Ace turn on god critical. mode. I would have appreciated like a health kit or two, but maybe you don't want to keep health uh, pretty rare to force the player to come here and leave themselves super vulnerable. Are there just three assassins? I thought there were more. Uh, oh, I should turn God mode off now. Um... Where am I supposed to go? I don't remember. Am I supposed to jump onto there? Oh, I didn't make it. Oh well. Am I supposed to walk over here? there. Uh, I must do go up here and uh, uh, I'm missing something. May I mi I'm supposed to go here? What's over here? No, that's just a truck. There we go. That opened something. I don't know what it opened. Did it spawn more assassins on me now? Should be sneaky. Oh yeah, and then just admire this lovely Apache helicopter prop. At all the details. Although usually if you're this close to the Apache, you're probably dead already. Okay, do I go over here now? Oh, okay, now is the trap room. That's the guy? 
Yeah, I thought there were going to be more than three assassins. Where are we taking this Freeman guy? Top side. Requesting. What the hell for? We got him. Why not just kill him now? Uh, and just they find the body? Hey. What body? <laughs> 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 Although, I mean, if, again, if you're a first time Half Life player and you see the assassins, you don't know that you should switch to explosives. You'll probably just try to, like, shotgun them or hit them with a machine gun or something, and then. And then it'll be really hard and exciting, maybe. Well, I like the addition of this. This like giant metal thing. Oh, uh oh. So I think this scene is also one an iconic half pipe scene. The Star Wars trash compactor thing. Which you have to avoid getting crushed here. I think most players uh, barely escape. You know, you always feel like. You know, you always feel like. Um, you barely get out of here, I feel like. It, it's always timed pretty well. At least I think it's timed well. The trash compactor room feels bigger than the original, though. Maybe I'm imagining it. Oh. Why had that door open? What? And then what I like about this too, uh, this whole trash compactor thing. Uh, oh, people in the chat are making fun of me for saying it's easy, but then use God mode. Um, I think what I like about the trash compactor sequence is that the things come together and smash together, and then they, and then it like forms a bridge for you to cross over to the other side, which. I like it. I like it when um, you know moving parts and levels have more than one purpose, right? So before this trash compactor was your enemy, it was not your friend. But then, when it when it's done compacting, it it's a little bridge for you to progress. So you know it's more like a ex boyfriend that you still talk to a little bit. Oh. And all these grunts died. Oh dear. Oh, and of course we lost all our equipment in time-honored video game tradition. Uh, people in the chat are worried that I might miss class, <laughs> that I might miss time everything and leave my students hanging. Yeah. It's okay, I'll just tell them I was playing video games, so that's why I couldn't talk to them. Wait, what am I supposed to do here? I don't understand. What did the lever do? I felt like it opened something? But why would I want to go to the other side? What's over there? Oh, it opened um, the hatch at the bottom. Ah, okay. Can I jump down there? No. I'll be safe. I mean, the class is level design. It's a video game school, so... I can just say this is class prep, more like. And now we are in the sewage where we belong. And so begins the next next uh, section of Half-Life. Uh, I think this is probably where I'll have to stop, unfortunately. Um, I like the rock. I like all the cliff work here, though. This is really nice. Um, well, we'll have to appreciate it next time, unfortunately.
uh, where we get into residue processing. Um, okay. Uh, thanks everyone for hanging out with me. Thank you to any Black Mesa developers for their lovely, beautiful patience. Um, and um, please uh, give your condolences to any source modder or source engine one developer you know today because uh, there's a lot of stuff going on today. Anyway, thanks everyone. Uh, have a good rest of your day and uh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye.